Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. And we'll open our Bibles in the book of Psalms. 121. Psalms 121. And I confess to the burden. I'm going to open up my heart. I had a little difficulty to understand that in, have, in heaven we were going to just sing songs. From this day forward, I understand. There's nothing better than this, right? Isn't it? I felt, uh, is it going to be only this, only praise, praise, praise? Man. Today was just a warm up. Amen. Just a warm up of what is going to happen in heaven. Today, understand clearly how God is perfect. I'm going to make the message a little smaller so I, I don't mess it up. So I don't want to mess up what God has to do with us in our midst. Psalm 121. Let us read all together. Amen. Let us read. I lift up my eyes to the mounts where the, does my help come from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The brethren can sit down. My brethren, we are in celebration. Today, we finish the activities of the month of October as in a feast and commemorating 50 years of existence. And our feast is not because we are a large in number or rich. That's not the reason. The feast, your celebration today here is because we are witnesses of the power of God in our midst. And this is what causes us to always praise when we are in the presence of the Lord. That's what causes us to want to be in the presence of the Lord. There is no other situation, there is no other reason why we would be here. This text speaks of the experiences of a man. It speaks of the experience of a man. This, na this man who lived in the same way we have lived. He lived in the dependence of the Lord. He lived consulting the Lord. He lived hearing the voice of the Lord. He lived listening to the advices of the Lord. He tried to live his life inside of the project of God. In such a way that God calls him friend. God called him a man according to my own heart. And the text also speaks of a situation that he went through. Jerusalem was a city, is a city surrounded by mountains. It is it's situated in a depression and it's surrounded by mountains. And the psalmist here, when he expresses in words, it says for sure, it speaks of a situation which Israel may have gone through in a moment in which he looked 
to heavens and saw the city surrounded. And now here, for sure, in prayer to the Lord, he speaks what he wrote here. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My brethren, this experience, his experience has been our experience. It's been the experience of men, generally speaking. What I can affirm today is that there is not a, a, an adult or youth that may not have in a moment of their lives looked to a situation and faced a situation and not have asked this question. It's difficult to find a person that may not have asked a, a question similar to this. I am surrounded. I'm trapped. What am I going to do? Who is going to help me? How am I going to do now? How am I going to solve this problem? This is the question that many have to face. Children, I'm, I'm not, sh not so much the children, but according to the things that are going, soon the children are going to be facing with situations like this. What to do? How to do it? And the Lord here teaches us. The psalmist says, My help comes from the Lord that made heaven and earth. He was not expecting anything beyond the help from the Lord. He didn't trust in the mounts. He didn't believe in soldiers, in armies. No. His trust was on the Lord. And our trust is also being on the Lord. Because the world lives surrounded. The enemy does that. The enemy of our souls, the siege of a city, a village, was a war tactic. In order for the person to stay there weeks, months, surrounded without being able to go out or get in, or without being able to receive supplies, until came a situation in which the, the person of the region would surrender to the attack. The enemy of our souls does that. Many times they surround, her, surround men in such a way, surround a couple, surround a family, surround a friendship in such a way that it begins to suffocate and squeeze until the person gives up and, and hands out completely um, their life to, into defeat. But those are moments in which we need to trust the Lord. Those are the moments in which we need to know that our help can only come from the part of God. We can never give up. We can never accept the pressure that is being made up against the gospel, the pressure that the world is placing upon the life of the servant of God. We can never give up. We cannot never let go of the values that were given to us by God. We need to fight. We need to fight for what we have. We need to fight for what God has given us as direction for our lives. Doesn't matter how much we're squeezed. Doesn't matter the degree or difficulty. It doesn't matter. We need. We're going to be victorious. Today is difficult. Tomorrow will continue to be difficult, but the day after, the victory is assured. Because the faithful that remain faithful is honored by God. The faithful that persists, the faithful that perseveres on the path in Jesus is always victorious. And this has been our experience. We will be victorious through the blood and the word. That's the theme of this year that's coming to an end. If we came to this point, to the beginning of the uh, month of November, is because it has given us victories. It's because the doors have been opened, because the provision came, because the direction came, and because the hands of the Lord showed a direction to us, the path, the way out. 
the resource came, the help came. The help came from the part of the Lord. And that's why we're here. Because the Lord always comes. He will not let your foot sleep. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. My brethren, God came at the right moment. He never rests. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't forget about, about his servants. The commitment of God is with the faithful. The commitment of God is with the church that's being prepared and adorned by the Holy Spirit to be removed from this world. And the vision says here, it speaks of fellowship with the body, fellowship with the church, and that's what it is. Fight for this. Do not allow that small things or great things may rob your blessing. Do not allow this. doesn't matter what it might be. doesn't matter. You have a call from the Lord to serve Him. Do not allow man to create difficulties. Do not allow anything to steal your, your blessing. Fight for what God has given you. The God of Israel will not uh, slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. We have seen this many experiences of the servants, the departure of the people of Egypt, Egypt and the Red Sea. So they were in a situation, Lord, I turn my eyes to the mountains where my help will come from. The Red Sea opened up and the people went through with dry food. It was a miracle to this day. It's spoken about, it's been proven in history. There's no way for us to uh, deny this. There may be a theory, theory A and B, it doesn't matter. The miracle happened. Man cannot explain. But we know that it was a provision, a miracle from the part of the Lord. We also see Daniel in the den of lions, right? There was a decree that nobody should pray, nobody should serve another god or kneel down before another god other than the king, Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel, inside of his house, oh, the decree was signed. He went into his bedroom, opened up the window, <coughs> and prayed to the Lord. He prayed to God. The servant is never ashamed of praying. The faithful is not ashamed of testifying the power of God. The faithful is not ashamed of saying that God is the Savior of his life. He prays. There may be pressure, there may be accusations, there may be... It doesn't matter. He goes before the media and the newspapers there and glorifies the Lord for the victory. Right. The faithful does that. It doesn't matter. He doesn't care. And people may say, oh, what a shame. He's... But, well, that's how it is. The servant of the Lord, uh, the moment in which he starts his work, he, he starts with prayer because he trusts in the Lord. He doesn't trust men. He trusts the Lord. And Daniel did that. He opened up his window and prayed to the Lord, praying toward Jerusalem. And his friends, Isaiah, Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, they also they, they were thrown to the furnace. They increased the heat of the furnace seven times. Imagine. And they were thrown inside of the furnace. The soldiers that threw them into the fire also died. And when they entered that, they were received by whom? By Jesus. I can imagine the arrival of the three men, the three youth inside of that furnace. And Jesus receiving them. Oh, peace of the Lord. <laughs> Let us begin the service. Let us begin praising. Just like here. Imagine there, Jesus with those three youth participating in that furnace. Imagine the victory. 
imagine the fellowship there. Are we going to begin the service? Yes, that's how it is. Praise to the Lord. The fire fell down, and even the king was amazed. Didn't we just through through three? How come there are four? Is the power of God? My brethren, the Lord has a commitment with the ones who are faithful. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The soul of man is the one who desires to go back to God. The Lord wants to rescue our soul. That's why this morning we're here glorifying the Lord for this victory. Because we want to be at the shade from the Lord. And Psalm 91 says, Whoever inhabits in the um, have heavenly shelter at the shade of the Almighty will rest. The rain and the sun rises up to everyone. The sun rises up to everyone. To the sinners, the servants, to unfaithful Christian. Rain also. But the shade is only to those who invest in the shelter of the uh, 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 Most High. The shades speak of the, of the refreshing. The shades speak of the renewal. Imagine you in the desert, desert in great heat, and you find a place where you can rest. A shade, there's nothing better than that. Especially people that work on landscape, that work, oh. Oh, thank God I work inside with air conditioner. Imagine people that work on the outside, uh, terrible heat. Even then you see on the street uh, somebody uh, laying down under a tree, resting, seeking a, a shade. The Church of the Lord already has this rest. We already have it because we are inhabiting in the powerful, on the powerful wings, uh, under the powerful wings of the Lord. We already have a shelter. We are not here being deceived we chose to serve the Lord and our names are already written in the book of life that's why the Lord we, the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore the Lord is want to protect our coming from the moment that we came into this project the moment from the moment we entered this project to accept salvation to Jesus the Lord has protected us he chose us and now he will protect our going. You know when it's going to be our going? In the, the in the rapture of the church. Where everything will be passed uh, will pass. And we will be eternally singing songs to the name of the Lord. This is our joy, my brethren. And nothing can steal that from us. Nothing. That's why this morning the Lord has brought us here to remind us of this so that we may celebrate this great victory that the Lord has given us, this present, which is the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Amen. May God bless us. Let us hear a song.
Or to Jesus. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If one day God made a promise to you, this promise will be fulfilled. Because God honors His word. Once God used a man, prophet Isaiah, to speak when you go through the water, when you go through the fire, when you go through the rivers, right? They will not be uh, harmed. This assurance we have when we go through, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but we are going to face trials. We're going to face difficulties. But know of one thing, but that the promise of God will be fulfilled. If you are faithful, God will protect your soul. And nor fire, neither rivers, nor storms, nothing can discourage the servant of the Lord. Nothing can stop the servant of the Lord. Because honor, God honors His word. Let's open up our Bibles. First letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 11 says the following. First Corinthians 11 from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given taken he broke and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took uh, the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it rem in remembrance of me however you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes so then whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of this cup. The supper of the Lord is a feast, a way of the Lord to give to us sustenance and strength and the me spiritual means to withstand the fights, the trials of this life. We are being proclaiming the coming of the Lord Jesus, which is a f feast that we await in so eagerly. So we need to place our lives before the altar of the, do the Lord. We have our flaws, our imperfections. We need to have awareness of that we are sinners and ask forgiveness to the Lord, and ask strength to the Lord so that we can run away from sin and the practice of sin. What kills a servant is the practice of sin. Uh, unknowingly, that's why we ask uh, we want to ask, Lord, have mercy. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Give us strength to withstand, to run uh, away from the appearance of evil, because the siege is exactly this. The enemy is surround us, surround us, attacks, and there comes a moment in which you falter. But we need to receive from the Lord the sustenance, the strength, the fellowship, then we will be able to overcome the practice of sin. That's why I would like to invite the deacons here. And at this moment, as you were, you will be praying to the Lord, placing your life in the altar of the Lord. You will be making mention of the perfect sacrifice, Jesus in the cross of Calvary, the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. Jesus, He is for us an example. He is the direction the way in which we are able to remain in this path.
I asked the Deacon Wayne to glorify the Lord for the elements, the wine, and Evander for the bread. We'll plead for the this blessing in favor of our lives. Sanctify uh, so that your church may be able to, the church may receive deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord. Elements are going to be served. We're going to wait so that we can all take part together. After everybody served, we're going to take part all together.
Remember, the supper is of the Lord. It does not belong to Maranatha Christian Church. If you are already being baptized in the waters, if you are in fellowship, whatever you congregate, you are our guest. You can participate with us. The children, intermediary, they, they, they don't need to do the physical act of the supper, but they receive the same blessing. The blessing of the supper, the strengthening, is also passed on to our children. If someone didn't receive uh, the elements, ra raise your hand. Everybody was received the, the elements, the bread and the wine. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Invite those who can to kneel down. Or if you if you prefer you can stand up. We will together participate on this special moment, this feast. Brother Jesus, place your life before the altar of the Lord. Brother Jesus. Place your life before the altar of the Lord. Don't leave it for later. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Everything will pass. Our God is almighty. He can change your destiny, your luck. You can convert your blessings. You can turn your tries into blessings. to Jesus.
Bless him in the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Lord to God. Amen. Let us all together. Hallelujah. God, edify your people, Lord. Lord to Jesus. Amen. Lord to Jesus. It's first the bread and then the wine. children once again I speak with you I am your Lord at this moment which is special because is the fulfillment of an ordinance for me from eternity you are receiving the strength that comes from my part and the understanding of the body of my son, the worth of his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, each drop that he shed so that you would be here together, gathered, united in my love, glorifying my name, and doing this in, memory, in remembrance of him. Rejoice, my children, because it is this instant that my angels are walking amongst you and visit each one of you giving blessings emotional blessings um, blessings of the heart blessing your bodies this morning there are seven lives being cured there are three of them of infirmities that they don't even know that exist I am your God my power is manifested in all your midst midst at this morning, bringing joy of salvation, and I want to do this always with you. I'll come down to visit your hearts until the day my son will come to take you, and you'll be sitting with me in the glory. We, we will have supper with me in eternity. Rejoice with me because my love overflows upon you. I renew in many the desire of being with me in the glory. There are few that have lost this desire and I cause it to be burning in their hearts once again. The fire of my Holy Spirit. And I tell you, I want you for me. My son didn't die in vain. It was the price of, the, of his blood that you have been purchased to eternity. He came to the world and not even the enemy of our souls. No one will be able to steal you from my hands. I have poured out upon my church the anointing of the, my Holy Spirit is necessary to face the, tri the pressures of this world. The world cannot handle you anymore. You no longer here, you don't belong to this world anymore. 
and the sooner give an order to my son, it will be bring you close to me, where there will be no pain, where there will be no sadness, where there will be no suffering, a place where we dry up from your tears, from your eyes, all the tear of sadness, where there will be only joy and glorification to my name. And my servant, don't give up, because I called you to be victorious. Remove from your heart every sadness, every depression, of every desire of giving up and placing you the spirit of fortress that is in my son. My son, you who thought that it, that was going to be the last service that you would take part on, it's not going to be for the glory of my name because I have filled with this spirit in such a way that the world will not attract you anymore. Today is the beginning of a new phase for you. Glorify my name and be a vessel of blessings in my presence. Glorify my name, church, because this place is filled of my spirit. My glory, it fills this place. Glory to Jesus. Church may be seated.
Joshua, stand up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Lord God, I have no words, Lord, to express what we are, we're feeling right now. The joy that taking over our hearts. We thank you for this banquet, for this gift that you have given us this morning and we ask Lord that this joy may never extinguish may never leave our midst and that we may always be led by your Holy Spirit to live moments like this constantly in your presence we praise you for the renewal we praise you for those this morning that have been awoken have been taken out of uh, their laziness, their spiritual tiredness. Hallelujah. 
we praise you, Lord, and ask you take us home in peace, so that we may have a week in your presence. Is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In our name, we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. If they turn off the light, you will never stop singing. <laughs> if somebody complained with Presbyterian Pastor Sabado is going to be responsible for the, the Presbyterian is there. If, if anybody complains that the service took too long, we have a service at 7:30 p.m. I'd like to invite you, the brethren, to to invite our family members, our neighbors, the ones who have, who have been target of our prayer. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. Thank you.